we're going to introduce the concept now of simple linear regression. Regression is the most commonly used tool in statistics. It's one of the most powerful tool in statistics, and it's one of the most often misused tool in statistics as well. What are we going to do next? Sounds really official. Constructing models to fit data, analyzing them using diagnostic tools, and then summarizing these models using inferential statistics. This is a great set of lines to use when you go to the bar tonight and someone asks, what are you learning in your statistics class? But really what this is, is pretty simple. Constructing models to fit data, the first thing we're gonna do, that just means we're gonna be drawing lines. I don't really say drawing. We're gonna be drawing lines. And then we're gonna say, do the lines fit? That's it, do the lines fit? Is it appropriate to draw a line? And then we're gonna say, is the line flat? Inferential statistics. What does this line tell us about the true population line, some relationship between X and Y? Here's some data on the size of your brain and your IQ. Now IQ is a dumb variable, but we'll use it here as some continuous measure of IQ. And the size of your brain, we have a nice continuous measure. And we can look at some summary statistics of central tendency for the X and the Y. And we can look at the measures spread and we can look at the range. If you have a large brain, maybe you're smarter. To draw this out, we look at two way scatter and then you put your Y variable first and then your X variable here. If you have a big brain, you probably have a big forehead too. Big brains, big foreheads. What does a big forehead always mean? You have a big brain and that you have a high IQ. Well, we quantify this a little bit with the correlation coefficient. It's a number between negative one and one, unitless. And it says, what's the linear relationship between these two continuous variables? The null hypothesis was there's no relationship. It's a cloud or just a blob. If you look at this, these brain size data, the correlation is 0.337 which we said depends on your area of research or your field of study, but that's kind of, a, it's not that strong. It's kind of a modest relationship. However, it is statistically significant at the 0.05 level. P is less than our alpha value. And again, in Stata, you can run PW core for pairwise correlation. Put your two variables in, ask for the option of significance, and there you see the R and the P value. The correlation coefficient answers what is the linear relationship between the two variables, but it often leaves us begging a little bit more. If I told you, hey, there's a relationship between how many cigarettes you smoke and how long you live, you'd say, okay. And I said, hey, and it's statistically significant. The more cigarettes you smoke, the shorter your lifespan. You would say, okay, but how strong is that relationship? Each additional cigarette that I smoke how much will that take off on my lifespan on average? And what if I said to you, well, every cigarette that you smoke, on the average, it takes a thousand hours off of your life. It, that's pretty scary. You probably quit smoking. What if I said every additional cigarette you smoke on the average, it takes 10 seconds off your life? Hmm, 10 seconds, that might be worth it. I'll spend more than 10, se 10 seconds smoking that cigarette. What's the truth? You can look this up, but at the time of this filming, it's estimate something. Every cigarette you smoke takes about 10 minutes off of your life. That's enough to scare people away from it. This is why the correlation coefficient can tell us if there's a linear association, but it doesn't tell us really the strength with respect to how much does my X variable relate to my change and my Y variable. And regression will do this for us. What we do or what our program does is it will fit a line through our points. This line is the best fit line. There's only one line for each set of points. And the way that this line is fit is it minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. What does that mean? Well, the residual is the distance of each point to the line, each point to the line. And I can draw all sorts of lines here. I could draw a line that looks something like that, and you say, that's a, that's a pretty stupid line. It doesn't really capture any of that variability. There is this best fit line and you see it right here. You often see the term error used here. It's not error as in mistake, 
but it's error as in I'm trying to predict something. What's my IQ? And there's going to be some leftover. Those are the residuals or the, or the error. Now, when we have just these two variables and we draw a line, we call this a simple linear, because it's a line, a simple linear regression. We regress Y on X. This is the regression of IQ on brain size. Now, this line is unique. It is the only line that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. And that's why this is called the OLS, or the ordinary least squares line. And there is an equation that your computer or you, if you wanted to, could figure out what that best line is. And regression is all about talking about lines. This goes back to, I don't know, seventh, eighth grade. You probably remember you learned at one point Y equals, do you remember? Y equals MX plus B. When you learn that, you learn that this right here, this M, is the slope, M is the slope, and B was the intercept. Now, in statistics, we use different notation. We usually write it like this, Y equals A plus BX. And what that means when we draw the line, the A is the Y intercept. And that's what value of Y is that line going to have when X equals zero. That's the Y intercept, and we call that A. And then we use the letter B to talk about slopes. Slopes are how much does Y increase as X increase? It's like a slope, like you're skiing on this line. You would slide on that line. You might remember the slope being delta or change in Y over change in X, delta Y over delta x. Or you might remember it being called the rise over the run. This is what you learned in seventh grade, just like Snoop Dogg and Axl Rose and Brad Pitt and Tina Fey. They all learned the same thing. The slope. The slope is what is key. Now, when we fit the line, we can call this a model. And now we've moved on to the statistical process of modeling. That might be spelled wrong. Someone looked that up. How many L's are in modeling? Modeling sounds fancy, but it really is just drawing a line. My line here is the model. It's my prediction for someone's IQ based on the size of their brain. And I write the model out like this. IQ, so that's Y, equals some intercept, so that's A. If you had a brain size of zero, this model would predict your IQ is 14.9. Now, obviously, you can't have a brain size of zero or you wouldn't be watching this at all. You wouldn't even have an IQ. And if you look at the range of values that we have here, zero is nowhere near where these points are that we're making this model. But we still have to fit this line somewhere in space. There are an infinite number of lines that have this same slope, the slope of 1.08, and we have to somehow anchor that line here. Now, 1.08 is the slope, y equals a plus b. And we're going to call this the beta or the slope or the parameter estimate, y equals a plus b x. And the way that works is if you plug in the size of your brain, your x, multiply it by 1.08, and then add 14.9, you get a prediction for IQ. For every one unit increase in brain size, there's a 1.08 unit increase in IQ on average. This is the interpretation of the slope that we're gonna use in statistics. It's a little different than seventh grade because we're gonna acknowledge that on the average, we're trying to predict the average IQ, the model's not gonna be perfect. Now, if you think about this, we got a bunch of brains and we got a bunch of dots. And then from those dots, we fit a line. Why did we get those brains? Well, from some sort of random sample. Why do we get that line? Well, that line is a random thing. The slope, it truly is a thing from seventh grade. This is a value, 1.08 is a real number. But you gotta think about the slope as some sort of random variable. The slope is just a statistic that describes my sample. What do I think the true relationship is, the population parameter for the relationship between the size of your brain and your IQ? Or the relationship between how much saturated fat you eat and your cholesterol? Or the relationship between how much you exercise and how your blood pressure changes. What is that truth? 
Well, we've done that. That's called the game of estimation. Take your sample, put a confidence interval around it. And the game of hypothesis testing, where you postulate a null hypothesis about the parameter and then say, what's the probability of getting my data if the null hypothesis is true? That's called a p-value. So as we've seen before, our null hypothesis is usually there's nothing going on. There's no relationship. And for the regression, that would look something like this, a flat line. So the null hypothesis is there's nothing going on. And the alternative hypothesis would just be that the slope is not equal to zero, right? And to run this in Stata, you go to the menu statistics and then linear models and related, and then you pick linear regression. This is a very powerful tool. It's actually pretty cool that you can run this with just one word, regress. And you type regress, and then you put your y variable or your dependent variable, and then your x variable or your independent variable. It's called the dependent variable because your IQ depends on your brain size, right? All right, so here's the output that data is going to give us. And let's take a second here um, and read this. Um, this is a typo. Ignore that top line. What we want to look at here is the equation for the line. Stata spits it out for it like this. It gives us this thing called the constant. And the constant is going to be the intercept. Regardless of the size of your brain, you get like 14.9 points just for showing up, right? That gets added to your IQ. And then here we see the slope. Stata labels these with the terms coefficient. And here that we see the slope is 1.08. Now, it's nice for us is that it labels the variable itself, that brain size is the thing that's going to change, and you multiply it by 1.08. Now, that coefficient, that slope, is a random variable. Had you taken different brains, you get a different line. Different line, different slope, right? And so we would think that what slope we got is somewhat random. We'd get a different slope every time we did a study, and what quantifies how much that random thing bounces around? The standard error. Now, it turns out if you take the coefficient and divide it by the standard error, it turns into, you guessed it, a t-statistic. A t-statistic of two, we can turn into a p-value. What's the probability of getting my data if the null hypothesis were true? Well, if the null hypothesis were true, we already saw we have a bunch of dots and we'd have a flat line. What would our coefficient be? It would be zero. Zero here divided by anything here would be zero. So if the null were true, you would expect zero. We actually got 2.18. So we go over to 2.18, color in the area to the right, color in the area to the left. How much area did we color in? That's called huzzah, that's the p-value. P equals 0.036. It's a statistically significant relationship between the size of your brain and your IQ. Stata can make this cool little plot for us, which emphasizes that the slope is a random variable. It's a statistic. Look at this. I got two exclamation points. Had you taken different brains, you would have different points. And the line that you fit, imagine this is my slope right here. It might be a little bit steeper or a little bit shallower. It would bounce around. It might be up a little higher or a little lower. And all of those possible lines, if you looked at 95% of those possible lines, they would end up making a shape something like this. Some of the lines would be here. Some would be here. If you did this over and over and over again, you get a 95% CI for the slope. Our study is just randomly reaching in and grabbing one of those things. Now, if you look at that CI, you notice that those bounds, that shaded area, doesn't include the flat line. It's statistically significant. So let's summarize the model. Y equals intercept plus slope times X. P is statistically significant, less than our alpha of 0.05, so we reject the null. Brain size is a significant predictor of IQ. How significant? What do you mean? What's the effect? That's why it's so nice to have the slope. For every one unit increase in brain size, on the average, your IQ goes up 1.08 points. It's statistically significant. We can look at the, the, the confidence interval for the slope. And notice, what is not in that CI? Zero. Because that null value is not in there, it's a statistically significant relationship. 
Now, pitfall. Do you want some drugs? Yeah, everyone wants drugs. But do you want some drugs to increase the size of your brain? It seems fancy. You have a model here. You have a p-value. You have a bunch of numbers. But don't forget that at heart, all this is, is an analysis where you drew a bunch of dots and then you drew a bunch of lines. Nobody's brain size was actually changed during the filming of this video. We didn't actually see what the effect might be, what the temporality might be, obviously what the side effects and stuff might be. So be careful not to fall into the trap of getting married to the model, unless it's Claudia Schiffer.